An aluminum alloy rod has a length of 10 centimeters at 20 degrees Celsius and a length of 10.015 centimeters at the boiling point of water. What is the length of the rod at the freezing point of water? Let's start with a picture of our rod at its different temperatures and lengths. At 20 degrees Celsius, the rod is 10 centimeters long. We will define the variables T20 as the temperature at 20 degrees Celsius and L20 as the length of the rod at 20 degrees Celsius, which is 10.000 centimeters. The rod lengthens to 10.015 centimeters when it is at the boiling point of water, which is 100 degrees Celsius. Let's define T100 as the temperature at the boiling point of water, which is 100 degrees Celsius and L100, which is the length of the rod at 100 degrees Celsius, which is 10.015 centimeters. We see that for this temperature difference between 20 degrees and 100 degrees, we're going to have a difference in length. We expect the rod to shorten when its temperature is at the freezing point of water. We will call this new length L0 and the temperature T0. There'll, there'll be a change of length. We expect the rod to shorten. T0 will be defined as the temperature at 0 degrees Celsius. L0 will be defined as the length of the rod at T0, which is unknown at this time. So let's find the length of the rod at 0 degrees Celsius. We know that the fractional change in length of a material is directly proportional to its temperature, where the difference in length is relative to a reference length at a reference temperature. To find the length at 0 degrees Celsius, we will start with writing the fractional change in length with the rod's length at 20 degrees, taken to be our reference length, at the reference temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Let's isolate the length at 0 degrees Celsius by first multiplying both sides by the length at 20 degrees, then moving the length at 20 degrees to the other side. This becomes the length at 0 degrees is equal to the length at 20 degrees plus the length of 20 degrees times the coefficient of linear thermal expansion times the difference in temperatures between 0 degrees and 20 degrees Celsius. At this point, we see that we do not know what the coefficient of linear expansion, alpha, is. We need to know alpha in order to find the length at 0 degrees, so we have to turn to what we are given to see if we can determine alpha. We are given information about the rod's length at 100 degrees Celsius. We can use this information to find an expression for the coefficient of linear expansion. We 
Notice we know the temperatures at 20 and 100 degrees. We also know the lengths at 20 and 100 degrees. This is enough information to determine alpha. So alpha is proportional to the ratio of the difference in lengths to the difference in temperatures, where the proportionality constant is the reciprocal of the length at 20 degrees Celsius. Let's rewrite our expression for the length of the rod at zero degrees. The length at zero is equal to the length at 20 degrees plus the length at 20 degrees times the coefficient of linear thermal expansion times the difference in temperature between zero and 20 degrees Celsius. Our expression for the coefficient of linear thermal expansion can now be substituted into our expression for the length at zero degrees Celsius. The coefficient of linear thermal expansion is equal to the difference in lengths between 100 degrees and 20 degrees over the length at 20 degrees times the difference in temperatures between 100 degrees and 20 degrees Celsius. We can simplify by eliminating the length at 20 degrees from the numerator and denominator. Let's rewrite this simplified result. The length at zero degrees is equal to the length at 20 degrees plus the ratio of the temperature differences at zero degrees and at 100 degrees multiplied to the difference in lengths between 100 degrees and 20 degrees Celsius. We see that we have expressed the length at zero degrees as far as we could algebraically, so it's time to plug in numbers. The length at zero degrees is equal to 10 point zero 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 centimeters plus zero point zero 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 degrees Celsius minus twenty point zero 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 degrees Celsius over one hundred point zero 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 degrees Celsius minus twenty point zero 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 degrees Celsius. This is multiplied to the length at 100 degrees which is 10.015 centimeters minus the length at 20 degrees which is 10.000 centimeters. Looking over my work, I see that I forgot to write down a Celsius unit in the denominator after 20 degrees. We can now simplify by canceling our Celsius units from the numerator and denominator. Plugging this into my calculator yields that the length at zero degrees Celsius is 9.997 centimeters. This length is, as expected, shorter than our length at 20 degrees Celsius.